During the 50s and 60s, when black people had few options to gather outside of churches and skating rinks, they would serve as meeting places for political rallies and planning. Miss Nina is 80 years old and still skates every week. She's able to provide a first-hand account of Indy's deep black skate culture. Once you pick up the skating, it's in your blood. Miss Nina, she's been skating for a long time. And at 80 years old, she's a testament that forever lasts a long time. Once you get it, you, it's there forever if you're a real skater. 74 years ago, she put on her first pair of strap-on skates, and she hasn't slowed down. Showing the younger skaters, she still got it. <laughs> then I'm, I make sure I'm not dressed like grandma now. Early on, skating was posh. A 1963 article in the Indianapolis Recorder newspaper read, none of the white Indianapolis skating rings are patronized by Negroes. And once integration happened, there were some things, if you were black, you just didn't and couldn't do. And it was so strict. Couldn't skate backwards till they said so. Couldn't wear a hat. Get in a fight. They had to call the police, dogs on children. I'm like, we're not having that. In the early days, she says many of the skating rings were burned, some due to racism, some vandalism. So the community raised a tent skating ring in the late 50s near 19th and Hillside. Roller skating was considered, they call it ghetto. We call it slum. Oh, they're from the slum if you roller skated. That tent broadened the racial divide. A September 1950 article written in the Indianapolis Recorder outlined a proposed ban. The skating ring is situated on a line dividing a predominantly Negro neighborhood and an all-white community. The article added that the white residents complained about it being too loud. So after um, the tent, they built the skating ring back up again, and that was in the 50s, late 50s and it was 25 cents to get in. You wouldn't believe how hard it was to get 25 cents. Getting 25 cents is a lot easier these days, but the stories she can tell are priceless. And if you happen to see her pass you on the floor, consider yourself lucky. And I fell in love with skating ever since. And Miss Nina hasn't kept the fun to herself. Her children are skaters. She says her son Michael is the best, and even her grandkids get out there on the floor with her. Now, this was part two of my series on black skate culture. We've made it easy for you to go back and see part one. Just grab your phone right now and scan the QR code on your screen. It will take you to right to the Inside Story page on wishtv.com. Reporting in the studio, I'm Wish TV News 8's multicultural reporter, Katira Winfrey.